Hi everybody, it's uh, cultural attache and ambassador Dr. Stuart A. Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moya Swerdlow. And this is the Expansions News Podcast Addendum for the middle of August 2018. Yeah, and so I have some interesting news that I want to fill you in on because if you remember last week I talked about Kanye West and his slavery diatribe. Right, and he's brilliant. Yeah, well now we have another... Uh, person, a, a programming icon, celebrity, who was also talking about slavery, which I thought was very interesting because we have the national anthem, which has been in the news. I talked to you about the NFL people taking a knee, which I said is the opposite. They need a knee someplace else. So this is former NBA star Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <gasps> haven't heard about him in a while. No, and he's up here. <clears throat> now, this was very interesting because he was drawing a parallel between the national anthem and slave songs. You get this one? He said black athletes are being forced to sing the national anthem in the same way that slaves were ordered by their masters to sing songs. I mean, this is such oh, a far come, This is a national anthem, you bobo head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has to do with, you know, white athletes, okay, this guy white is, athletes, he's black like, athletes. He's, he's taking Doesn't too matter. many drugs. Too many drugs for him. He said that a slave owners use, a compul- use compulsory singing to drown out their own cruelty and oppression and clothe them in a coerced choir of decency. And he goes on to say... Those big words for him. Currently, the song being demanded is the national anthem during football games. Isn't this ridiculous? He, he is amazingly moronic. Well, go, it, he goes on that the, it's not the land of the free. He said... Well, that's the truth. It doesn't represent the day-to-day reality for African Americans. And I want to say, it's not just African Americans... It's everybody lives here, Bobo. Right. They, it's a, he goes on to say they love their country, but want that country to recognize the suffering that occurs when it isn't living up to its constitutional promises. The daily challenge for African Americans is getting white Americans to listen to their song, especially when it isn't a grinning, grateful, or pandering patriotic song. Yeah, oh I will tell you, white Americans don't have it easy. It doesn't matter what color you yeah, are. I don't care what color you are. If you're are. living in this country, it's a, it's nobody a has it easy. U.S. is a mess. So this is designed to divide and conquer people. But be aware of this programming out there because we don't want to divide and conquer. United we stand. And that is what you need to remember. Mm-hmm. Stand, not kneel. Right, exactly. And then, of course, Aretha Franklin, who you know, passed away this mm-hmm. I always past liked her music. on August 16th. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, right away, people are talking about everything that happened on that day. And did you know that Elvis Presley also passed away? Yes, yes, yes. So we have um, Aretha, uh, Queen Aretha, who died at age 76, which is a 13, and King Elvis. So we have King, King Queen. and Queen both passing away on the same days. Um, Black and white. Yeah. And then we have Babe Ruth, who they called... I never heard of this. I know what it means. They called Babe Ruth, also passed away 70 years ago on that day. They called him the Sultan of Swat. Did you hear that? That kind of sounds obscene. I know. So Sultan. So we have King, Queen, and Sultan. So hmm. I thought, for whatever I reason... I uh, The Sultan... Did you ever hear him call that? Anyway, he died in New York City at the age of 53, so he also was young. And, of course, the same day they passed away was Madonna's birthday. And, of course, Madonna is not her real name. It's not? No, I don't remember. I didn't write it down, but you can look that one up. So, anyway, all this happened August 16th. Big day, big ritual day of some kind. I like that. Next and, day, August 16th, I'm going to stay in my room. I guess so. And now this, this story also caught my eye. Did you know on August 15th was Cycle to Work Day in the U.K.? Oh, they do it anyway. Now, what's interesting it's about cheap this to drive. is on that day, Queen Elizabeth's doctor cycled to work for Cycle to Work Day, and he was killed by a truck. Now, isn't that interesting? That is not an accident. And listen, listen to his name, Peter. Think of the Bible and Fisher, fishing, Fisher. Mm-hmm. And also remember George Bush's yes. doctor so also I, was bicycling to work and was killed. He was killed, and so I got that story as well. To just uh-huh. to bring this forward into people's minds Mm -hmm. because apparently the same thing happened that he was bicycling this doctor and another cyclist went by and fired two shots in the head right and then when they went to find that cyclist when they got to his house he killed himself now it's a little bit more interesting than that because it it is because this because of the queen elizabeth's doctor and he was a homeopathic physician by the Mm -hmm. way which of course there's a big to do in the u.s about that Mm -hmm. all the time but the queen has one just so you know i know that for a fact anyway now the man 
who was accused of killing this uh, doctor here in Houston, John James Pappas, 62. They claim that he was upset because his mother died on the operating mm -hmm. table two decades ago. Right. Now remember, here we are always going back 40 right. years, 39, 39 years, years, 20 years. So the Houston chief police announced the news of his conference and told us how he caught him. Now this is the bizarre part. What? Apparently this was when their break came. I don't know how they even identified this man. They don't exactly say. But they received a call from a, a worker who works for the Parks Department. He was checking the grounds for a graffiti vandalization, mm -hmm. and that he saw this man. And when he said something to the man, the man held his arms up. And guess what happened when he held his arms up? Dropped the gun? He dropped his wallet oh. with his ID. Just like the 9-11 hijackers. So isn't that interesting? So then, they, how, they, how did they identify him? They don't exactly say that they know this was the man, but mm -hmm. this worker called the police. The police rushed to the scene. So this man just happened to... So he dropped his wallet and bought pick it up and run away or whatever. It's Like I said, they still don't say how they identified the shooter. Mm -hmm. But they said that this man mentioned uh, suicide and he had body armor on and was not complying. Okay? Then they said that Pappas was suicidal based on texts he sent to someone. Uh -huh. And they identified him as a suspect after examining home security footage from residents who lived near the shooting. Isn't it interesting that all these dead people that have committed these crimes were suicidal? Yeah, and that they're dead. Right. right? So you can't ask them any questions. Right. So then, after they found out he intended to die by suicide, then they went to his home. He wasn't there. They got a search warrant. And... Um, anyway, what? Let's see. Somehow or another, he killed himself. So it's, shot, I think he shot himself. But and just telling you this, all kinds of holes in the story. But case closed, and again, case dropped. And when that happens, there's other parts right. that. And so we have on. two bicycle cyclists now, and two doctors, mm -hmm. two important people: the president of the U.S. and the doctor, the Queen of England. So is there going to be a third? So I'm going to say, watch your backs out Probably. there. Probably, if you're a if you're a doctor, do not ride a bicycle. Yeah, that's a weird thing in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then I want to move on to New World Religion. Mm -hmm. Because we've talked about how that the global handlers use universal law. Remember I did the, the, the uh, webinar series, yes. Decode in Your Life. They use universal law, which is what we teach, but we teach it to elevate society. Well now, here they're using a law to de-elevate society. No fooling. Yeah, apparently. Now this was kind of interesting. This was big news. Uh, a goat-headed creature, guess who that might be, mm. Baphomet. Oh, I thought you were going to say me. No, was wheeled onto the grounds of the um, Arkansas State Capitol. Because mm, they're brilliant in Arkansas. Look, they created the Clintons. Members and supporters of the Satanic Temple took it there to protest right. religious freedom. Right. Now, they were protesting the Ten Commandments monument that was installed last year after state lawmakers approved it in 2015. I will tell you, they can't legally install it because... Um, they can't? No. They, they just wheeled it on the grounds. Well, they're not installing it? No, they just wheeled it on the grounds. I guess they have to wheel it off maybe when the protest is done. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. Well... Because they didn't exactly say. But they have to have uh, state approval in order to actually put it on the grounds, like, permanently. Mm -hmm. Arkansas. So this is the state that had slavery, created Bill Clinton had race riots, and by the way, Baphomet isn't even a real thing, because if you do the history, the word or name Baphomet is an, a medieval French word for Mohammed. Ah, very interesting. Well, they call it uh, Baphomet, apparently, but Which I want to... Which is not even a thing. No, and I want to remind you, too, that the Satanic Temple is headquartered in Salem, Massachusetts, and they claim they don't even worship any deities. They consider themselves, according to their website, compassionate humanists who believe in science. Mm, they and en Satan. And they encourage benevolence <laughs> and empathy among all people, reject tyrannical authority, advocate practical common sense and justice. Isn't that what Christianity says? I don't know. Now, they also, the Satanic Temple, you might remember, they won a Supreme Court decision, allow them to teach classes on public school grounds. Um, and they call it the After School Satan Club, which features oh rationality and fun. They've challenged abortion laws in Ohio and Missouri, claiming that 
Um, they were founded on religious dogma, and that violates its members' beliefs. Well, after School Satan Club, A-S-S. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And last week, a federal district judge in Arizona denied the city of Scottsdale's motion to dismiss a lawsuit from the group for denying its members the opportunity to give an invocation at a city council meeting so, the count, so it will go forward. Well, Arizona, as you know, is hot as hell. Now, I also want to tell you that the Ten Commandments Monument, which was installed uh, in 2017 in Arkansas, that less than 24 hours after it was installed, a man drove his car into the monument, smashing it to pieces, mm -hmm. and then the same man destroyed a Ten Commandments Monument outside of Oklahoma State Capitol. So he just doesn't like anything. So anyway, this uh, statue of Baphomet that's seated, and it's, it's very... Yeah, I've seen. I know what it looks yeah, like. A lot of people have seen. You can read the link if you want. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that that's a very expensive statue. It is. It's got to be. It's huge. And it's very detailed. Mm -hmm. And whoever put that thing together know what they're doing. And of course, it's accompanied by two smiling children. That, oh, really? Yes. That were sacrificed to it. Probably. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But, you know, New World Religion, they're using the laws to put this in very insidiously in our country and all over the world. The world, yeah. Right. Now, more New World Religion. I've also told you that defecation is going to be part of New World Religion. And we have well, talked... Well, wait a minute. Everybody does that. We have talked about all the stuff. Remember, the women have got the big bottoms now, which now it's socially... Why do you want that? No, it's socially acceptable. It will be called a butt, which I don't like that word. And we've talked it about... Is? It is. We've talked about anal sex. We've talked about butt plugs. Okay. And we've talked about pooping. Hmm. So, pooping now is the word of this next section, because in Thank New Jersey... Do. Oh, Ken New Jersey and pooping, that's like the same thing, isn't yeah. it? New, uh, let's see, Kenilworth School Superintendent, uh, Superintendent Thomas Tramoglini stands accused of pooping near the Holmdale High School athletic field. That was like a while ago. No, it just happened. Uh -huh. um, they, they just gave him, the reason it's in the yeah, news. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah. Go on. Because they want, he can't apparently resign until September, so he's going to collect another $100,000. Yeah. But just the point of it is, he was appointed in 2015. Of course, he de he denies doing it, but they have video evidence showing him doing it. Wasn't he a jogger? I don't know. They, and he said he couldn't hold it when he jogged in the morning, so that's why he did it. He they said there's no explanation. That's but what the I read. point is that this is a person of prominence that they are putting out for you to see that does it, which means you should do it too, right? Well, I do, but not in public. Well, in San Francisco. They now have poop patrols to deal with human waste that's contaminating the sidewalks. Who's doing it on the sidewalks? They're, apparently, they're claiming that San Francisco only has 22 public toilets, so the homeless... In the whole city? That's what they said. So, instead of putting in more toilets or leaving, their, leaving them open so people can use them, now they've got uh, five public works staffers will be patrolling the sidewalks, mm -hmm. and apparently they get 65 complaints a day. In San Francisco about this. Well, here's what I find humorous. What? Because, you know, San Francisco is like hilly right. like this. So if there's a one up there, what they say, what? S rolls downhill. Yeah. I don't find that humorous. Oh, I think it's hilarious. But my point being is, is instead of having more public toilets, they're putting people in to clean it up. I mean, this makes no sense, right? Ah, who right? that job? Apparently five people have got it. Really? Yeah. Only five? Yeah. And the only 22 they have the public. whole city, five people. So, but they, it's... It's in the news, so that's ridiculous. Now, what's even mm. more ridiculous is what's going on in Paris. Oh, yes. Did you read that? Yes, yes. But that's not the only city that has that. Public urinals like yes. that? Yes, Amsterdam has that. And you, and men just go up and do it? And, yeah, and you, you just watch them do Fling it. Fling it out and let it out. Well, anyway, again, this is about, in my opinion, doing things that should be done in private. But it's publicly. so French. No, people are complaining about it. And they're even saying it's close to schools, these ones are where they're located. How about it's in front of the Louvre? It incites ex exhibitionism. You think? Yeah, and then um, a representative from the feminist group Femme Solidaire is complaining because there's a lack of public toilets for women. They don't have the parts to do that. They have been, well, maybe they'll, they won't they will care because the women will say we're, we're feminists and they maybe just you know do it right there in public. Mm. I don't know. Just like... Plot holes for them. Maybe, because it's just... 
they're just doing it in public. So that, you know, that pisses me off. I just think it's really terrible. It says the urinals are considered environmentally friendly since the waste changes into compost for the different right. plants and gardens that are on right. top of it. Right. And the Paris mayor says if we don't do anything, men are just going to pee in the streets. They do it everywhere in the universe. It's terrible. So anyway, like I said, some things should be private. So true reality of sexuality. Just put private bathrooms in. This month on my blog, we are talking about sexual deprogramming. We've got some really good conversations going, very respectfully. And 13Q, mm. you need to read these things, people, and see what's going on with your mind. So with that said... People, stop pooping and peeing in the street. Yeah, really. Privacy. Really? Seriously. All right. Next time. Bye.